that they are really, really powerful. They know how to get through to God. Hey, Lepak. Hi, honey. And so therefore, if you want to sow a seed or for prayers, please call that number, area code 242-823-6498 in the Bahamas, 823-6498, Monday to Friday, uh, or Monday to Thursday, I'm sorry, from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. Glory be to God. All right, I think quite a number of you have come in, so let me get a little bit started. And like I said, this is going to be an, uh, uh, a program where I want you, it's going to be a program of interaction today. Because today we're going to talk about two very interesting topics. We're going to talk about the Sabbath, and then we're going to talk about abortion. Oh my goodness. These were two questions that came in that really got my attention. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that today. <laughs> and we're going to pick up the conversation on the Sabbath next week. Uh, next week, Saturday as well. So we'll talk about that today and next week, Saturday. Remember, the new time for moments, I'm sorry, for Ask the Prophetess is at 3 p.m. every Saturday. Moments with the Prophetess remains Wednesday at 5 p.m. I want to sing a little song. Uh, I love to sing, you know. I think my first calling is that of a psalmist, to be honest with you. <laughs> And so before I was a pastor, a preacher, or a prophet, I was a psalmist. And that was a call that I operated in most of my life. Hey, hey, Prophetess Brenda Roll. Hey, hon. And so I love to sing. I think all of my programs, I got to get a song in there just to bless your heart, bless your spirit. And so I, I want to sing a song, glory be to God, uh, that I actually wrote. Uh, I write a little bit. My husband is really the writer, Apostle Dion Smith, but I write a little bit sometimes. <laughs> and of course, my husband writes and he arranges, he produces. And uh, uh, stay tuned tomorrow, Sunday. We're going to be singing one of his songs during our praise and worship. It's going to be powerful. Trust me on it. And so you don't want to miss tomorrow at 1030, uh, watching us here, Kingdom Explosion Ministries International. But there's a song I love. I love this song. You ever wrote a song? And, you know, sometimes as a writer, uh, uh, you, you know, you'll write a song and then you get excited about the song after you see people getting excited. <laughs> it's like somebody cooking their own food, you know. You, 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 you cook and then you don't really want to eat. And, or you wait until somebody say, boy, there's some good food. So it, it's, it's the same thing with a writer. You kind of get excited. Uh, glory be to God, after you hear the song and you see people's response and you hear people's response to the song. So this particular song, I wrote this. I wrote this, I guess, about a year ago. <laughs> and uh, to be honest with you, you know, I, I just wrote it and released it. But my children picked it up and started singing it. They have a little girls group and they started singing it. Uh, my praise team sung it and, and I heard people singing and I was like, Wow, that's a good song. <laughs> and so uh, I, I just, I'm just going to sing a little bit of it, just a little bit of it. During this time, during this time where we need to understand and know that God is our source, I want you to hold on to this song. I want you to hold on to it. Uh, because listen, nothing and no one, glory be to Jesus, can help us like our God. And so most certainly I want you to allow this song to minister to you. And it's just simply called, it's, it's moderately fast. It's just simply called, you are more than enough for me. You are more than enough for me. Hey, that's his name. That is literally his name. My God Almighty, I feel the anointing. Glory be to God. El Shaddai, the mighty breasted one who is more than enough. My God. And so this song, Holy Spirit gave me this song. I was actually ministering uh, prophetically in one of our prophetic services. And the Lord gave me this song. And so I just want to sing it. Glory be to Jesus to encourage you. But it goes like this. It goes, it says, You are more than enough for me. You are more than enough for me. You're my God and my Savior, more than enough for me. 
That's just the chorus of it. Oh, you are more than enough for me. Thank you, Jesus. You are more than enough for me. You, my God and my Savior, more than enough for me. Oh, come on, sing it with me. It's really simple. Oh, you are more than enough for me. Thank you, Jesus. You are more than enough for me. Yes, sir. You, my God and my Savior, more than enough for me. Oh, come on, sing it with me. You are more than enough for me. Thank you, Jesus. You are more than enough for me. You're my God and my Savior. More than enough for me. Oh, thank you, Jesus. You are more than enough for me. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You are more than enough for me. Oh, you my God and my Savior. More than enough for me. Hallelujah, Jesus. You're my God and my Savior. More than enough for me. Yes, sir. Oh, glory be to Jesus. Yes, sir. You're my God and my Savior. More than enough for me. Oh, Jesus, yes, you are. You're my God and my Savior. More than enough for me. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be to, <laughs> Glory be to God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And I love this song. You know, I always throw an old song in there. I'm old school, so I always throw an old song in there. Glory be to God. I didn't write this one, but I love it. It goes, I need thee. Oh, I need thee. Yes, Jesus. Every hour I need thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior. I Jesus. Oh, I need thee. Oh, I need thee. Thank you, Father. Every hour, every hour, I need thee. Oh, bless me. My Savior, I've come to, I've come to Thee. <laughs> oh, my God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know about you, but I need the Lord. I need the Lord. Every hour, I need the Lord. I can't do without him. I can't go anywhere without him. My God, I am nothing without him. I am like a ship without a sail, 
Without him, I would fail. Listen, I don't know about you, my brothers and my sisters, but listen, I need the Lord. I need the Lord. Glory. I need the Lord. Glory be to Jesus. I didn't say I want the Lord. I said I need the Lord. Glory be to God. I need him every hour, every moment, every minute. Glory be to the mighty God. I need the Lord. I need the Lord. Oh, Jesus. I can't say that enough. Glory be to God. Hey, my son, Prophet Mikhail. <laughs> Mikhail, Mikhail, Mikhail. I, I still trying to pronounce that name. Hey, hey, Prophet Taylor. <laughs> Glory be to God. Let me say something to you before I go into the teaching. And like I said today, we're going to talk about the Sabbath. Today we are going to talk about the Sabbath. Glory be to God. We're going to talk about the Sabbath. Glory be to Jesus. And then we're going to talk about, yes, yes, Willamay McIntosh. I need the Lord. I can't live without him. Oh, glory be to God. And then we're going to talk about, uh, is abortion a sin? This, this is going to be interesting today. This is going to be, <laughs> this is going to be interesting today. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. He is indeed worthy of the praise. He is worthy of the glory. And he is worthy of all the honor. Oh my God. Hallelujah. I, I was praying the other day. I was praying the other day. And the Lord said to me, he said three things. He said three things. I, I usually just like to encourage you before I go into the teaching. He said three t things to me. He said, it is time. Hear me clearly. He said, glory be to God. God, I feel the anointing already. I feel the anointing already. The Lord said to me, the Lord said, he said, it is time for the church to get up. Hear this. It is time for the church to move on. Glory be to God. And it is time for the church to possess the land. Oh, Jesus. Listen here. I said, the Lord said to me, I was praying. Glory be to God. Gabrielle Dean, I just saw your name. Gabrielle Dean, the Lord said he's getting ready to bring a complete turnaround in your life. There's going to be a complete turnaround. Hello, Bishop Wesley Johnson. Glory be to God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Wesley, I'm sorry, Gabrielle Dean, the Lord said he's getting ready to bring a complete turnaround. Turn around in your life. Gabrielle Dean, I just saw your name. And the minute I saw your name, the Lord started ministering to me about you. Glory be to God. The Lord said, yes, behind the smile. Glory be to God. Behind the smile, there is hurt, says the Lord. But I hear the Lord say to you, glory be to God. Hi, Bishop Wesley Johnson. <laughs> I hear the Lord say to you, Gabrielle Dean. I'm getting ready to give you a lifestyle change, says the Spirit of the Living God. I'm getting ready to give you a lifestyle change, says the Lord. Glory be to Jesus. I'm getting ready to give you beauty for ashes, says the Lord. Oh, glory be to God. And I get a little shy. I hear the Lord say, I'm getting ready to give you rest in your spirit, soul, mind, and body. I'm talking about, uh, talking to Gabriel. Lord, have mercy. I ain't supposed to be prophesying like this. Hallelujah. But I just saw the name. I'm talking to Gabriel. The Lord says, I'm getting ready to give 
give you rest. I hear the Lord say, I'm getting ready to give you peace. I hear the Lord say, I'm getting ready to turn your life around. I hear the Lord say, behind the smile, I'm going to remove the pain and the hurt, says the Spirit of the living God, and I'm going to touch you from the inside out, says the Lord. Hallelujah. And this change, glory be to God, will cause you to bring change unto the lives of others. I'm talking to Gabriel, says the Spirit of the living God. Yes, glory be to Jesus. Hey, my sister Claudine, uh, Apostle Claudine Smith, all the way in Nashville, Tennessee. Brother Christoph Roll, you're supposed to call me, my son. I haven't heard from you yet. Glory, I just saw your name. Glory be to Jesus. But the Lord said, the Lord said, I got to say that again, and then I'm, I'm going to just jump on it. I'm going to come off. The Lord said, it's time for the church to get up. Uh-huh. We've been sitting down a little bit too long. To get up says the Lord. Hey, Jillian, Gia Curry, hello. Time for the church to get up, my God Almighty. Time for the church to move forward, my God. And then it's Ekato Bakashaya. God, I feel an anointing today. And then it's time for the church to possess the land. Oh, Jesus and the Holy Ghost. I got to say it the way I hear it again. The Lord says, tell the church the body of Christ. He said, tell them, glory be to God, it's time to get up, my God Almighty. It's time to move forward, my God Almighty, because we've been going around in circles for too long. Glory be to God, the wilderness experience, hallelujah, is over, says the Lord. It's time to get up, it's time to move forward, and it's time to possess the land. Glory be to God. God Almighty. Hallelujah. The Lord is doing a new thing in our midst. The Lord is doing a new thing for the body of Christ. The Lord, my God Almighty, is getting ready to cause the body of Christ to make a statement in the earth. But we got to get up. We got to move forward and then he will give us the power, the ability and the wherewithal to possess the land. Lord Jesus, almighty God. Thank you, Jesus. Now I come here to preach. Remember I said this is a teaching format. This is a teaching forum today. <laughs> but I had to release that. I had to release that. I had to release that little bit of information. Glory be to God. Tune in tomorrow morning at 10.30. I'm going to be preaching that. Glory be to God. Tomorrow morning at 10.30, I will be preaching on possessing the land. Glory be to Jesus. Get up, move forward, and possess the land. Glory be to Jesus. And listen, I ain't just talking about substance. I ain't just, even though substance is a part of it, I'm not just talking. See, because the minute you start talking about possessing the land, people start thinking, oh, house coming, car coming, money coming, husband coming. No, 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 no. It's greater than that. It's greater than that. Glory be to God. The Lord is taking the church from levels to dimensions to rams. Glory be to God. And rams speak about dominion. My God Almighty. Rams speak about power and influence. Glory be to God. And the minute you have power and influence, glory be to God, everything else will be added. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then everything that you need will be added to you. My God Almighty, Prophet Mikhail. I hope I pronounced your first name right. Prophet Taylor. Glory be to God. Get ready to possess the land. Hallelujah, Jesus. Get ready, man of God. Hallelujah. Because God's getting ready to position you. Hear this. God is getting ready to position you in order to bless you. He's getting ready to give you great influence. Glory be to God. I'm talking to Mikhail Taylor. I hope I have the first name right. Glory be to God. But God is getting ready to position you, prophet. Glory be to God, my son. Glory be to God. He's getting ready to position you to bless you. You better go ahead and write that down. 
Glory be to God, because you will see it come to pass. Man, somebody pulling on me today. I supposed to be prophesying like this. I supposed to be teaching. Glory be to the mighty God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I hear the Lord saying unto you, glory be to God, Sister Jennings, Sister Janet Jennings. I hear the Lord saying unto you, I am going to give you an open door for ministry where you at, where you at. Glory be to God. You are in the United Kingdom. I hear the Lord say, I'm getting ready. Glory be to God, Sister Janet Jennings. The Lord said, your purpose is about to unfold like never before. Glory be to God. I see women's ministry. Glory be to God. I see you teaching and mentoring women. Glory be to Jesus. And these women, most certainly, yes. Hallelujah. They are part of your ministry, but not all of them are. There are some of them that the Lord will say, hand up that's outside of your ministry i'm talking to janet jennings glory be to god expect god to expand you and to give you open doors of ministry where you are says the lord to you glory be to god receive that word glory be to jesus what an awesome awesome god we serve go ahead and share this live go ahead and share this live go ahead and share this live Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Go ahead and share this. Hallelujah with everybody that you know. Glory be to God. God is about to do a new thing. Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. All right. So we're going to talk today. Hallelujah. We're going to talk today. Glory be to God about the Sabbath. Uh, Lorraine. Lorraine. Yes. Yes. Open doors for Janet Jennings. That's right. Glory be to God. Thanks for typing that, Kishan Hanshaw Roll. Yes, open doors for Janet Jennings. To, glo- to God be the glory. Hallelujah. Baketo to brabande lebo shita. Reke. Sufrant. Sufrant. I'm just seeing the last name. Sufrant. God says, I'm getting ready to heal you in your body, in your emotions, and in your finances. I just saw the lady kate nana makoto rabakete nana makoto ramande. I just saw sufrant. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. God's getting ready to heal you in your body, your emotions, and your finances. Glory be to the mighty God. Expect a turnaround in your finances. Glory be to the mighty God. Because you are a giver. Glory be to God. You are a giver. You wish that you can give even more than you are giving. Glory be to God. I'm talking to Sue Front. The Lord God is getting ready. Hallelujah. To turn your finances around. And you will have enough for you and to help others, says the Lord. He says, I'm going to touch you in your body, in your emotions, and in your finances. You better prove God on this one. Glory be to Jesus. I see the first name now. It's Justina. Just, okay, I just saw the last name. Glory be to God. You expect, go ahead and expect God to turn your finances. And listen, I ain't talking about no next year. I'm talking about this year. Glory be to God. God is about to give us an Isaac experience. Glory be to Jesus. I said, God, hello, Samus Monique. God is about to give us an Isaac experience. What do I mean by that? Hello, my beautiful sister again, Apostle Claudine Smith. What do I mean by that? Listen, this is the time to sow. My God Almighty, I feel this so strong in my spirit. This is the time to sow. You know why? Because this is the time, glory be to God, when the returns, hallelujah, Jesus will embarrass the devil. Oh, I got to say that again. I said, this is the time I'm talking about this season. I'm talking about 2020. I'm talking about this year. Glory be to God. Listen, the Lord made me some promises. Hallelujah. That it's to come to pass for me personally in 2020. I don't care who threw 2020 in the garbage. I don't care who want 2020 to go away. I don't care who bad mouth 2020. Listen, 2020 ain't going nowhere until God done do for me what he promised will happen in my life.
life in 2020. Lord, I wish I could get about 100 people just to agree with me. Glory be to the mighty God. Hallelujah, Jesus. And the Lord said to me, he said, he said, he said, he said, he said, he said, this year is the time to sow. This year is the, listen, man. Glory, I, I, I can't say this enough. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. This is the time and make sure you sow into good ground. If you want to sow into this ground, it's fine. Glory be to God. If you want to sow into your church, that's fine. But make sure it's good ground. Don't waste your seed. Don't waste your seed. Glory be to God. Plant your seed where you know. And I say where you know. It's good ground. Glory be to Jesus. This is the time to sow. Why? Because it is in this time when God himself steps in. Glory be to God and gives a supernatural return. Lord, what's this? I feel like running right now. Oh my God. I said this is the time when God steps in and gives a supernatural return. Lord, what this is, the reason why Isaac had to sow in famine, because God wanted Isaac to see that his sowing, his giving, and his reaping had nothing to do with him, nor his daddy Abraham, but it had everything to do with the favor of God upon his life. So Isaac's seed, hallelujah, turned into a supernatural harvest in the midst of famine oh Jesus and the Holy Ghost I said Isaac's seed turned into a supernatural harvest in the midst of famine the Lord says uh, the word of God says Isaac sowed in the time of famine and in the time of famine he reaped 100 fold 100 fold is always a supernatural return it's always a supernatural return. Remember now the parable of the sower. There were persons or there were, glory be to God, there was seed that was sown. Hallelujah. <laughs> I got some people watching me at my door. I'm a church recording. Uh, there, there, there's some persons that sowed. Glory be to God. And even though they sowed, they only got 30%. They only got 30 fold. And then there were some that sold, and they only got 60 fold. But then there were some, glory be to God, that sold, that received 100 fold. It tells me then that those that sold the 100 fold had to have sown in the best ground. Oh, God Almighty. And so, therefore, their seed, glory be to God, took on a supernatural manifestation and brought a miraculous harvest. Don't let nobody talk no fool to you because you got some, for lack of a better word, you got some, Lord, I ain't going to say fools because I ain't going to say that word, but you got some demonically inspired people that would tell you, don't sow, don't give, don't pay your tithes, but they don't have no problem with you going to the web shops. They don't have no problem with you gambling. They don't have no problem with you spending your money in a bar. They don't have no problem with you giving your money, glory be to God, to your sweetheart, your sugar daddy, your sweet girl, your other person on the side. Oh, Lord, you're starting me up, up in here. Glory be to the Holy Ghost. They are demonically inspired. And trust me, you will be the one to suffer for it if you listen to them. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. You got to understand in this season, the devil is on assignment to derail the body of Christ. Glory be to God. I said he's on assignment to derail you. I don't care how powerful that train is. I don't care how fast it can go. I don't care how innovative the technology. I don't care how new the system is. The minute that train is deri derailed, it is destroyed. Its purpose is destroyed. So don't you let the devil derail you. That's what's happening in this season. Glory be to God. That's why you got to know the word. You got to believe the word. And you got to stand on the word. And if you know the word, you believe the word. And you stand on the word. The word has to work for you. So listen. 
This the time to plant your seed. Glory be to God. And if you feel so led to plant into Patrice T. Smith Ministries, this is the time to do it. Glory be to God. Now, I ain't necessarily the one who can say give 50, give 100, give 1,000, whatever. I, I, I don't necessarily function like that. You let the Lord lead you. My God Almighty, you know what you need from God. You know what you want God to do. You know what needs to turn around in your life. So this is the time to sow. My God Almighty. Hallelujah. All right, let me get into the teaching. Glory be to God. By the way, if you want to sow into this ministry, the number is outside of the Bahamas area code 242-823-6498. Somebody put it on the screen. Area code 242 823 If you're in the Bahamas, then 823-6498. Glory be to God. I ain't going to let nobody stop me from sowing, honey. I live by sowing. I came out of a life of poverty. I came out of a life of poverty. And what do I mean by that? I wasn't born poor. Glory be to God. I was born in a middle class family. But the Lord processed me and took me out of a middle class family and allowed me to go into poverty. And I lived in poverty. I was processed. And I lived in poverty for at least 15 to 20 to 20, minimally, minimally 15 years. Glory be to God. If I could put a time limit on it, I, I would say that I was processed for about 25 years. Glory be to God. Where I live from hand to mouth. I said I live from hand to mouth. I know what it is to suffer. I know what it is. Let, let me talk a little bit of my testimony, man, before I teach. So y'all can notice a real prophet y'all dealing with. Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. I know what it is to live from hand to mouth. I know what it is. And that's why I believe the word so much. Where the word of God says, he will answer even the very desires of your heart. Listen to me. I know what it is to sit in my house. And in my mind, I say, Lord, if I could only get some apple juice to drink. After having a baby. After having a baby, not even having enough food in my house. Glory be to God. To replenish my God Almighty. And I'm breastfeeding. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I remember sitting in my house, breastfeeding my baby. Glory be to God. And I said, God, if I can only get, a, 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 I literally, in my mind, I didn't speak with my mouth. I talked to the Lord in my mind. And I said, Father, if I can just literally get some apple juice, glory be to God. Can I tell you within an hour, there was a young lady, she's dead now in the presence of the Lord. There was a young lady blew outside my house. Oh, God Almighty, she was a store owner and she a restaurant owner and she blew outside my house. Glory be to God. And when she when I went outside to her, she said, because she used to call me prophetess from that time. She said, prophetess, she said, the Lord just told me to come to you to bring you some juice. My God Almighty, that woman brought me a case of orange juice, a case of grape juice, a case of apple juice, a case of fruit. Listen, man, don't don't tell me that God does not hear the very desires of your heart. And in the midst of me going through poverty, I sold my way out. I said, God, I'm going to sow my way out of this. Because this is not where you would have me to be. This is not the end of my story. This is not the end of my life. This is not your perfect will for me. Yes, you are allowing it in your permissive will. Because you are pruning me. And fine tuning me. And processing me. But this is not the end of my story. So, in the midst of me going through, I sowed. So if somebody gave me a dollar... I took 50 cents out of that and put it in church. I said, God, I'm going to sow my way out of this. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And now the Lord has blessed me. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Where I'm able to bless others. Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. I said, now the Lord has blessed me where I'm able to bless others. Glory be to God. Why? Because I did not look at my circumstance. I looked at God's word. And I said to him, I will sow myself out of poverty. And I literally did. Glory be to God. 
So you stay right there. Talk about times hard. You hold it on to your little $150. Glory be to Jesus. You stay right there. And I talking to y'all who are in the body of Christ. I don't mean unsaved people. Because plenty of y'all in the body of Christ, you don't tithe, you don't sow, you don't give, you don't give offering. But y'all are the ones that you want the most from God. That amazes me. You want the most from God, but you're the one who's giving the least. The devil and you is a liar. Glory be to God. You keep your hand closed, ain't nothing coming to you. Because a closed hand means a closed mouth. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And so therefore, let me go to my, oh Lord, have mercy on me. I only deserve it with one question, even though I say I supposed to answer three on Saturday. <laughs> y'all, y'all got to forgive me. I'm, I'm passionate. I'm a passionate prophet. I'm, I'm passionate about what I do. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. And then I guess that too, that's my personality probably. <laughs> Hallelujah. But this is the time. Glory be to God. Just like the word of God says, this is the time to get up, move forward, possess the land. You hear that? Get up, move forward, possess the land. Glory be to Jesus. All right. So let me talk a little bit. Let me answer this question. Let me open this question up. I'll try and open up these two questions. Glory be to God. And then we'll finish it next week, Saturday. All right. So Lorraine, and, and I know Lorraine. Lorraine is one of my spiritual daughters that I'm mentoring. And listen, I'm getting ready to do, uh, to start up Patrice T. Smith School of Mentoring. Glory be to God. And, and again, that's going to add so much to my schedule, my already busy schedule, but that's all right. I'm getting ready to start Patrice T. Smith School of Mentoring. And of course, uh, if you are interested, just call that same number that I've given. Uh, area code 242-823-6498. 823-6498 in the Bahamas. Glory be to God. And it will be a school of, of midwifery. A school of midwifery. Glory be to God. Where we, with the Holy Spirit, through the word of God, knowledge and information will usher you into your purpose, teach you how to walk in your purpose. Glory be to God. And I think the best mentoring you could ever have is the mentoring of a true prophet. Glory be to Jesus. And so most certainly, uh, uh, we'll talk about that a little bit in the programs to come. Hallelujah, Jesus. And then eventually, glory be to God, we'll actually do a conference. Glory be to Jesus. Uh, uh, next year is what we're looking at. But this year, we want to get started. We want to get started with the online uh, mentoring classes. And so, of course, going forward, you'll get a little more information from me concerning that. How to know your purpose. How to identify your purpose. How to walk in your purpose. How to give birth to your purpose. How to be effective in your purpose. We're going to be dealing with all of that. Glory be to God. I won't be the only uh, uh, person, but this particular school of ministry, hallelujah, which is a school of mentoring, glory be to God, uh, uh, most of the, the uh, instructors, most of them uh, will be from, not most, all of them, all of them will be from the fivefold ministry gifts, meaning apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. So stay tuned. You're going to be hearing about that very, very, very soon. Glory be to Jesus. So many of you are saying to me, prophetess, could you please mentor me? Could you please be my midwife? And, uh, you know, I, I, to be honest with you, I, I can't talk to everybody on the phone. I, I wouldn't have a life if I do that. Most certainly I wouldn't have a marriage. My husband will pack up and leave me, and I can't afford that. <laughs> so I only speak with persons on the phone if I'm so led. If Holy Spirit say to me, I want you to speak with that one. Glory be to God. But of course... Uh, the Patrice T. Smith, yes, Patrice T. Smith School of Mentoring. That's literally what the Lord gave me. So that's what we're going to be dealing with. I'm going to be mentoring people, glory be to God, on how to fulfill purpose. Too much of the church, too much of the body of Christ is not walking in purpose. They're wasting time. They're idle in the seats. They, they're idle in life. You know, they're existing. That's it. They're not living. They're just existing. Glory be to God. 
So coming on stream very shortly, very soon, uh, we're going to be giving information concerning that. All right. So let me, let me, let me, let me answer as best I can this first question. And of course, like I said, I want this to be a little uh, interaction today. So if you want to put your comments on the screen, glory be, glory be to God. If you want to put your comments on the screen, that's fine too. Uh, but we want to ask, we want to answer this question for, uh, for my daughter. I know Lorraine. I know Lorraine. And so she said, mom, can you please uh, give me the answer to this? And I said to her, I said, you know what? Let me answer it on air. Let me answer it on air because I'm sure other persons uh, would be asking the same question. Remember, ask the prophetess. It's all about answering questions that are general in nature. In other words, questions that most persons would want the answer to. Amen. And so, hey, Pastor Paula Clark. Hello, my dear. How are you? Hope that all is well. How is everything up there in California? I'm looking forward to coming up there to see you, hon. Glory be to Jesus. All right. So, so the question that she asked was, uh, she says, Prophetess, are we to honor the Sabbath? Are we to rest and to go to church on the Sabbath? Should we honor the Sabbath or keep the Sabbath or observe the Sabbath? If I could open her question just a little bit more. In other words, what she's really asking is, should we be keeping the Sabbath and should we be going to church on Saturday? That's, that's the gist of her question. And so therefore, yes, Pastor Paula Clark, she said, yes, I can't wait. All right. And, and, so, and so, yes, Lapak, there are many people that are existing. They're not living. They're just existing. And trust me, they're in the body of Christ too, not just the world. Glory be to God. Why? Because they are, they are void of purpose, because they're not understanding what it is God has called them to do. Glory be to Jesus. And so, uh, you know, we, we, we most certainly, part of my call, and I do believe that the Lord would use the rest of my life to do this, uh, to help to mentor people, push them into their purpose. Glory be to God, so that they can walk. Glory be to God, not just in dominion, but in prosperity and live effectively. Glory be to God in the earth. And so uh, uh, most certainly uh, Patrice T. Smith School of Mentoring is coming on stream shortly. And, and so therefore the question Lorraine out of Canada asked, she said, should we be observing the Sabbath or honoring the Sabbath? Should we be going to church on Saturday? I want some of y'all to help me answer that. I want, to see, I want to see your answers. Go ahead and type your answers in. Go ahead and type your comments, your answers, your comments. Send them to me. Send them to me. Now, now let me open this. Let me open this by saying unequivocally, unequivocally. Am I saying the right word? All right, let me use an easier word. Let me say this definitely. Let me say this definitely. I am not answering in support of a denomination. I am not answering in support of a belief system by a denomination. I am not answering this in support of anyone that worships on the Sabbath or on the seventh day as a means to salvation. Because I do not believe, hear me very clearly, I do not believe that honoring or not going to church on another day. Let me, let me, let me, let me rephrase so I can make sure I'm saying it clearly. I do not believe that if you do not go to church on sun Saturday that you will lose your soul. So in other words, I do not believe and I do not hold that honoring or going to church on Saturday will cause you to lose your soul. But let me say this very clearly. Let me say this and hear Prophetess Patrice T. Smith. Hear me very clearly. The Sabbath day is the seventh day. Hear me. The Sabbath day is the seventh day. The seventh day of the week 
is Saturday. There is nowhere in the word where the Sabbath day was changed from Saturday to another day. I'm going to go slow so you can hear me very clearly. Let me reiterate. I'll go back. The Sabbath day is Saturday. And again, I said, that's why I preface by saying I'm not in support of any denomination. I'm just speaking what the word says. The seventh day of the week is Saturday. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. On the seventh day is the Sabbath. It's a day of rest. We saw that all the way back in creation. From day one to day six, Father created the entire world, the earth, the universe, everything that was created was done within six days. On the seventh day, the Bible says very clearly that God rested. I want you to hear that word very clearly. The Lord God creator rested on the seventh day. All right. The word for Sabbath is the word Shabbat. The word Shabbat, S-H-A-B-A-T, the word Shabbat literally means to rest. It literally means to rest. The Sabbath does not mean going to church. The Sabbath does not mean staying in your house. And when I say that, I'm saying that you stay in your house all day. The Sabbath does not mean, most certainly, that you do things pertaining to ministry. No. The Sabbath literally and only means to rest. You can't get nothing else out of that word. And, and so, therefore, let me say this. Very definitely. Prophetess Patrice T. Smith, I observe the Sabbath. However, I am not a Seventh-day Adventist. I do not propose nor do I agree with that those who do not honor the Sabbath day will lose their soul or cannot be saved. In other words, I do not support the teaching that if you don't worship on Saturday, that if you don't rest on Saturday, that you will go to hell. I do not believe that. However, I observe the Sabbath day. What do I mean by that? I give credence to it. I give honor to it. I recognize it as the day that God, Father, Creator, Yahweh rested. And so because I am made in his image and his likeness, my desire is to do what he did. So therefore, I observe the Sabbath day, which means on Saturday, I rest. I don't work on Saturday. I rest. I don't go to church on Saturday. I rest. Because Sabbath, Shabbat, means to rest. And so... At the same time, I am not bound by the Sabbath because Jesus said that the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. In other words, the Sabbath is not to control you. The Sabbath is to give you direction. In other words, the Sabbath is to give you boundaries. However, the Sabbath is not a means of control. Hear me clearly. Now, this is where I disagree with my Seventh-day Adventist brothers and sisters. Glory be to Jesus. Because, and I will show you, you will understand that the Gentile church, and this began, glory be to God, even from the book of Acts. My God Almighty, the Gentile church, which is inclusive of Paul the Apostle, 
worshipped on Sunday. Now it does not mean that the Jews did not rest on Saturday. I'm talking about the Christian Jews. It does not mean that they did not rest on Saturday, but they worshipped on Sunday. Let's establish that. And so therefore, I want us to go to Acts chapter 20. Now before I say that, I was literally, the way that I got to observe the Sabbath, I was literally, I'll be very honest with you, I was literally sick. My body was attacked. Physically, glory be to God. And I was sick. And the Lord said to me, while I was home in my bed sick, the Lord said to me, I am going to heal your body. He said, but I want you to do two things. Literally, the Lord said to me. He said, I want you to take my body, which is, you may call it communion. He said, I want you to take my body, Thank you, Holy Ghost. He reminded me. It was three things. It was three things. But I'll talk the first two. Just reminded me about the third thing. He said, I want you to eat my body and drink my blood every day. And he gave me a time frame and a time period that he wanted me to do it. He said, I want you to eat my body and drink my blood, which means take communion. He gave me a time frame. Well, I can go ahead and say it. I'll say it. He gave me a time frame of 90 days. It was three months. Glory be to God. And then he took me to Isaiah 58. He said, I want you to read Isaiah 58. And when I read Isaiah 58, Isaiah 58 was talking about honoring the Lord's Sabbath. Honoring the Lord's day. So he said to me, he said, I want you to observe that's the literal word that he gave me he said i want you to observe the sabbath i said okay lord and then he started to give me some things that he wanted me to do on the sabbath and then he said to me he said i want you to come before me every saturday i want you to come before me in white now these are the instructions the lord gave me listen i'm not trying to formulate a doctrine I don't want you to do what I do just because you say Prophetess Patrice said it, so I'm going to do it. I'm saying this is what the Lord said to me. And so I said, okay, Lord. He said, I want you to do it for 90 days. Glory be to Jesus. I was struck with a very serious heart condition. And he said to me, I want you to do it for 90 days. I did it for 90 days. And at the end of 90 days, the Lord completed completely healed my body i didn't say half heal i didn't say a quarter heal i didn't say three quarters heal i said the lord completely healed my body and so after i was healed glory be to god the lord said to me he said i want you this was after i walked into healing he said i want you to continue to observe the Sabbath. So therefore I realized that my healing depended on my observation of the Sabbath. I'm talking about me. My healing depended on my observation of the Sabbath. So to this very day, glory be to God, I observe the Sabbath. However, I am in church today, Saturday, and I am recording a program. I am not in my house resting. I am in church. Glory be to God. Why? Because Jesus also said, whatever is needed or needful, if you can use that word, is lawful. I have a program to do on Saturday. So it would be stupid of me to be in my house, lying in my bed, resting, or sitting in my chair, when there's an audience of thousands worldwide that are waiting to hear from me on Saturday. Are you hearing me? And, and so therefore I say again, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. Because remember now, man was created before the Sabbath. 
Let's get that clear. The sixth day is when man was created. That's why the number six means man. The meaning of the number six is a man, a human. And so therefore, mankind, which includes both male and female, were created before the Sabbath. That's why Jesus said that. After God was finished, on the sixth day, he looked at everything that he did and he said it is very good. He never said it was very good before. Every other creation or every other part of his creation, he said it is good. But when he was finished with mankind, the human being, the humus, male and female, he said this is very good. In other words, God applauded himself when he created us. And so, after he was finished creating humankind, then the Bible says, God rested. It didn't say God had no church service. It said he rested. Now, observing the Sabbath simply means to honor it, to give it credence. To recognize its importance. And so therefore, glory be to Jesus, whenever you observe the Sabbath, you are not observing it as a means of salvation. Because if you are observing it as a means of salvation, you have entered the spirit of legalism. I said if you are ent or observing the Sabbath as a means of salvation, you have entered into legalism. And there is no power in legalism. There is power in grace. Legalism will only lead you to death. Why? Because Jesus said, Paul said, sorry, if you're going to keep the whole law and Jesus both, if you're going to keep the law, you must keep all of them. Hundreds of laws. You must keep all of them. If you don't keep all of them, then you have broken all of them. That's the reason why grace came. Grace came to cover us. So therefore, I observe the Sabbath. I honor it. I give it credence. I give it importance. I rest. However, if I have to come out and do a wedding, if I have to come out and do a funeral, if I have to come out and minister to a member that is sick, and it's a Saturday, the Sabbath is not Lord over me. The Sabbath was made for me, not me for the Sabbath. See, this is where I go on the opposite side of my Seventh-day Adventist brothers and sisters. Because if it is needed on a Saturday, you do it. I'm going to say it again. If it is needed on a Saturday, you do it. However, Saturday is the Sabbath. It is a day of rest. Now, the New Testament church, in particular, the Gentiles, worshipped on, they called it, the Lord's Day. The reason why is because Jesus most certainly resurrected, or his resurrection happened after the Sunday, after the Sabbath. And so therefore, they considered his resurrection the Lord's Day. So they considered Sunday to be the Lord's Day, right? Now, Constantine was really the one that really how hard and fast place Sunday as a hard and fast day of worship. However, he did not place that with the idea that Sunday is to take over the Sabbath. That's why I preface all of this by saying the Sabbath has not changed. Nobody could change it. No one could change it. God himself set it in place. The Sabbath is Saturday. It's the seventh day. You honor it. You observe it. However, it is not to control you. And so therefore, I observe the Sabbath. I rest on Saturday. As long as I don't have anything that I have to do. I rest on Saturday. I worship on Sunday. Now, 
I can really, I can really most certainly question if I were to be the devil's advocate, I can say to my Seventh-day Adventist brothers, Saturday is supposed to be a time of rest. What are you doing in church? What are you doing preaching and praying and singing on a Saturday? That's the day of rest. That's the time to be resting. The body needs rest. A cessation from any type of labor. So if you would use the same uh, uh, explanation that I gave, which is what is needful is lawful, then most certainly we can also most certainly believe that, listen, if we worship on Sunday or if we need to work on Saturday, that there's nothing wrong with it. If you need to work on Saturday, there's nothing wrong with you working on Saturday. Even though Saturday is the day of rest, because again, I just said, and I'm going to say it again. Jesus said, whatever is needed, whatever is necessary, is lawful. And so, you can't say to your boss, this is my Sabbath. I ain't coming to work. Because the Christian church is divided as far as Sabbath is concerned because the Sunday worshipers believe that Sunday is their Sabbath. Seventh-day Adventists believe Saturday is their Sabbath. So what happens if all of the Seventh-day Adventists on Saturday say, I'm not coming to work? All the Christians who observe Sunday say on Sunday, I'm not coming to work. Who's going to work? Who's going to be at work? No. If it is necessary, Jesus said it is lawful. So because of that, you cannot then say that not resting or observing the Sabbath means that you will not inherit eternal life. You can't say that. There's no, there's no foundation for that. Why? Because again I said the early church worshipped on Sunday. Now, we have to keep in mind though, glory be to Jesus, that there are some things that we do do. That's not necessary. So we do do it on Saturday. And because we do do it on Saturday, and it's not necessary to be done, then you are not observing the Sabbath. So for instance, is it necessary for you to go to a party on Saturday? Is it necessary for you to go shopping, leisurely shopping, on Saturday? Is it necessary for you to go even to the food store or grocery store on Saturday? Is it necessary? I'm using the word necessary deliberately. Is it necessary for you to wash your clothes on Saturday? No. There are things that are not necessary. We do it because we are used to it. And so I say to you, if it is not needed, if it is not necessary, do not do it on a Saturday, but take that time to rest. The body needs rest. There's one day that you should rest. And the Bible clearly says that day of rest is Saturday, the seventh day. There are some persons that work seven days a week. You are out of order. That is ungodly. That has nothing to do with the word. And I don't care if you say I'm trying to make ends meet. Because that means, you see what you just said? I am trying to make ends meet. So you just took God out of the equation. So we must understand, whenever principles are violated, breakdown is going to occur. I said whenever principles are violated, breakdown is going to occur. So you work seven days a week and then your body breaks down with sickness and disease. Whose fault is that? I used to work in the healthcare profession and I know many healthcare professionals that died. You know why they died? They were working overtime, some of them six and seven days a week. How could you work 24 hours or two shifts? 
How could you work 16 hours? How could you possibly work 16 hours, seven days a week? That is ungodly. It is wrong. It has nothing to do with the word. Hear me and hear me clearly. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. On the seventh day, you are to rest. Now, I know a lot of you, or some of you may disagree with me. That's just all right. Like I said, Jesus never changed the Sabbath. Father Yahweh never changed the Sabbath. The Sabbath is still the seventh day. But the seventh day still means rest. That's all it means. Rest. Rest what? Rest your body. Your body needs rest. Glory be to Jesus. Stores are open from Monday to Friday. Grocery store is open. Or food store is open. The wash house is open. The cleaning places are open. The parks are open. Recreational places are open. So why do you need to be out on a Saturday if it's not necessary? Observe the Sabbath day. Rest on the Sabbath day. Trust me, you'll see the difference even in your body. I saw it in my body. God healed me, literally, physically, of a very serious heart condition. The Lord healed me. Glory be to God. I suffered, I was suffering from congestive cardiac failure. In other words, my heart was failing. But the Lord healed me. Glory be to Jesus. Made me whole. And he told me specifically, observe the Sabbath. In other words, rest. And so I don't do anything unnecessarily on Saturday. I do what I need to do as a pastor, as a minister of the gospel. So as a pastor, minister of the gospel, there are sometimes I must do weddings on Saturday. I must do funerals on Saturday. Most certainly on Sundays as well. So whatever I need to do on Saturday, I do it. Whatever I don't have to do on Saturday, I don't do it. I use that time to rest. All right. Anybody have some questions there? Any comments? Shoot me up some comments, some questions concerning what we just discussed. Uh, let me see your comments and your question. Whether you agree, whether you agree, whether you disagree, that's fine. Just go ahead and shoot it up there. Glory be to Jesus. Just say, prophetess, I agree. Or prophetess, I disagree. Glory be to God. But the early church observed the first day of the week. In particular, if you want to read about it, you can go to Acts chapter 20. Glory be to Jesus. And so therefore, God would not allow his body to worship on Sunday if they're supposed to be worshiping on Saturday. If they're supposed to be worshiping on Saturday, he would not allow his body to worship on Sunday. So it has nothing to do with worship. It has everything to do with rest. So Seventh-day Adventists, y'all could have church on Sunday. Ain't nothing wrong with it. You could have church on Sunday. You just rest on Saturday. Amen? Glory be to Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Now, I say that, and that's why I gave a, a personal uh, 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 testimony, because I can only say what the Lord said to me. He said to me, Personally, he said, I want you to observe the Sabbath. Glory be to Jesus. Amen. 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 All right. And of course, like I said, we'll take it up a little bit further on Saturday. But I want to answer the second question so at least I get two questions in. <laughs> All right. The second question. And so Lorraine from Canada, I hope that I answered a little bit of what you said. And uh, because your question was uh, three part, you had a three part question. You said, are we to honor the Sabbath? Yes. We're to honor it and observe it. Yes. Are we to rest on the Sabbath? Was your second, the second part of your question? Yes. The Sabbath means rest. Are we to go to church on the Sabbath? No, you don't have to. And let nobody tell you that either. Because they cannot substantiate it by the word. You can go to church any day of the week you want to. You could go Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 
Friday or Saturday. So don't let anybody lock you into legalism. The Sabbath means rest. So as far as I'm concerned, Seventh-day Adventists, y'all should also be home on Saturday. Home resting. Glory be to Jesus. All right. This was an amazing topic, Lepak. <laughs> yes. So nothing's wrong with observing the Sabbath. We're supposed to observe the Sabbath. We're supposed to honor it. We're supposed to observe it. But at the same time, if there is something that you must do on Saturday that is necessary, that pertains to life and godliness, do it. Remember Jesus told the Pharisees, he said, if a man, goat, or sheep falls in a hole and it's on the Sabbath, what you going to do? You going to leave him in there? Are you going to leave him in there until the Sabbath is over? No, you're not going to do that. And so what is needed or necessary is lawful, which means then you cannot use the Sabbath as a means of salvation. You cannot. You cannot substantiate that. It's nowhere in the word. Take this from me, somebody who now rests on the Sabbath day. I honor it. I observe it because Holy Spirit told me to. But I will not allow it to become a means of salvation. I will not allow the Sabbath to control me. It was made for me, not me for the Sabbath. Glory be to Jesus. All right. So the second question is, Prophetess, this from Jereen, Jereen from Barbados. Uh, prophetess, I've had an abortion. Is abortion a sin? Is it a unforgivable sin? All right. Only one unforgivable sin in the Bible. And that's not even easy to commit. That's not even easy to commit. The sin of blasphemy. That's, that's the only sin that's unforgivable. Unforg unforgivable. The sin of blasphemy. That's the only one in the Bible. No other sin. And, and that's not easy to commit. Because blasphemy is a total rejection of God even with knowledge. So therefore, let me answer the first part of the question. Is abortion a sin? Yes. Absolutely. It's murder. Take it from me. Take it from this prophetess. Take it from me. I've had an abortion myself. Take it from me. I had to repent of it. The spirit of death followed me because of it. I had to be delivered from the spirit of death, not knowing that the spirit of death attached itself to me because of the abortion that I had. So that's why the United States of America is suffering the way they are. That's why they're going through all the stuff that they're going through. And I say this without fear or retraction. That is why the United States of America, that's a part of the reason why they are suffering today. The blood of babies that have been murdered, I'm not going to use the word abortion, murdered in the United States of America is crying out to God. And the United States of America must repent. And every other country, every other country that allows abortion, but the United States more than any other country in the world, the blood of those babies are crying out like Abel's blood cried out to God from the ground. That is part of the reason the United States of America is suffering the way it is. My God, the carnage that's taking place, not just on the streets of America, but taking place in so-called hospitals and clinics. In the United States of America, babies that are being slaughtered daily. Is abortion a sin? Yes. It's the sin of murder. Can you be forgiven? Sure you can. Yes, you can. You just need to recognize that you've committed a sin. And then you need to ask God for forgiveness. Glory be to Jesus. Listen, it is clear in the word, this truth 
is threaded throughout the entire word. I said this truth is threaded throughout the entire world. And the truth is that God is the one who gives life. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. I open the womb and I close it. I give and I take away. So every child, I don't care what situation it is, it is conceived under. I don't care under what circumstance or situation to which it came to this earth. Every child that breaks the womb of earth. And what do I mean by that? I'm talking about the minute conception takes place. I'm not talking about when the baby becomes an embryo or when the baby becomes a born child. I'm talking about at the point of conception. Eh, because life begins at conception. I don't care what no doctor says. At the point of conception, glory be to God, purpose, my God Almighty, I said at the point of conception, purpose is unveiled. What do I mean by that? I'm talking about in the realm of the spirit. The minute that child comes to earth in the realm of the spirit, its purpose is known. Your purpose is known in the realm of the spirit even before you know it on earth. So therefore, that child has been given by God, that life has been given by God. Thank you, Apostle Claudine, Psalm 139. That's exactly right. And even Jeremiah, Jeremiah says, even before you and your mother's womb, or when you and your mother's womb, I knew you. My God Almighty, the word knew there means to ordain, to call, to have intimate, infinite knowledge. Intimate knowledge. Absolute knowledge. In other words, God ordained every human being that came to this earth. God ordained it. I don't care what circumstances it came in. I don't care what circumstances it came in. Now, I could be the one to go on the, on the limb. I am going to go on the limb. I don't care whether it came by rape. I don't care whether it came by molestation. I don't care whether it came consensually or unconsensually, if I could use that word. Because God says, I am the one that opened the womb. Why? Because according to Romans, he will turn everything around for good. Suppose Beethoven, Beth 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 I hope I pronounced it right, the composer. Suppose his mother aborted him. He had multiple problems. Suppose he was aborted. My God Almighty. Suppose, glory be to God. I think it was Israel Houghton. I think I heard his story where he was saying that uh, 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 he may have come through the canal of, of, of unconsensual sin. There are other persons. There are persons that I know in life today. In life today that are doing well in the spirit but they came to earth through molestation or rape but God is using them greatly in the kingdom you have no right as an individual and I'm talking about mothers and I'm talking even to myself because like I said I had to repent of that sin I had no right to abort that baby that was in my womb. I had no right to do it because I did not give life. I have no power to. So therefore, because I didn't give it, I have no power to take it without God's consent and approval. So yes, now I know sometimes there are people that say, well, what about if it's a life or death situation? What about if somebody, uh, uh, life would be taken if the child is not removed. So what about praying for healing? 
What about praying for healing? What about saying let that child remain and we'll pray for healing? Why not allow the church to permeate the world to the point where we go to the church to look for answers instead of coming up with answers on our own knowing that we don't know God and I mean the world. I know the situation. Matter of fact, I know it well because the young man is my godchild. I know of a situation where the mother was told to terminate the pregnancy because it was very possible the child was affected by German measles. And the doctors, both here and in the United States, matter of fact, she was referred to the United States. The doctors, both here and in the United States, said that the child must be aborted unless it would, would be grossly. Oh, God Almighty, I, I feel in that now because that's my godchild. Unless the child would be grossly affected. Never forget, she called me on the phone and she was crying. I never forget it. She said, prophetess, you prophesied this child. And I sure did. That's an anointing on my life. If I ever prophesy a child on you, you could start, you could start buying the baby clothes. She said, you prophesied this child. She said, you told me that I would get pregnant and I would have a son. And that's exactly what happened. She got pregnant and she was carrying a son. And she said, the doctors are saying both in the Bahamas and in the U.S. The child is affected, grossly affected. And so therefore, we must consider a termination is the word they use. Termination of the pregnancy. And I said to her, I said, the devil and them is a liar. I said, the Lord will not give me a word to give to you and then bring embarrassment to my life. It will not happen. I know who I am in God. I know I am a true prophet of God. I know my position in the kingdom. I said, the devil and them is a liar. I said, you tell them you will not allow the child to be aborted. I'd never forget it. I telling you, I know the story. The child is my God child. And I went into seven days of fasting. And I said, God, you will not bring me to shame. You will not bring your servant to shame. I said, God, I will not allow it. Because you said to me, to that woman when I was preaching. And I ministered to her. And I said, the Lord will bless your womb. And the Lord will bless your womb with a son. And he shall be a mighty prophet. I said, God, you will not bring me to shame. I said, that baby must come to pass. And it must come to life. And it must be known. Normal. concerning the works of my hand says God command me in other words you prove me you bring my word back to me and see if I won't honor it I said to the Lord that day I said you must honor your word you are not a man that you should lie nor the son of man that you would repent I said you must honor your word can I tell you, she went to the doctor, did the amniocentesis, which is the necessary test. Glory be to Jesus. I think she did it two or three times. Because I said, let them do it again and again. Glory be to God. Do it till they get it right. Because God's word must come to pass. Glory be to Jesus. Well, long story short. That young man is now, I think he's about 14 or 15 years old. Almost a straight A student. Born with nothing wrong with him. In perfect health and rightness of mind. At the top of his class. Excelling in different areas of his life and doing extremely well. I ain't talking off the top of my head. That's my God child. I know the situation. So therefore, there's nothing too hard for God. There's nothing too hard for God. I don't care how it happens. It is still murder. It's a sin. You must repent of it. Now you repent of it, you'll be forgiven. Because there's no such thing as an unforgivable sin other than blasphemy. Glory be to Jesus. And this nonsense that's going on in the United States, 
where they're trying to pass end term abortion is nothing but demonic. It is a diab diabolical, demonic plan from the pits of hell. How could you kill a baby after it has been partially born? How could you do it? It is nothing but demonic. And you got people that are senators in the United States of America that's pushing for this thing. It is nothing but demonic and it's from the pit of hell. And God will judge the perpetrators. There is nothing too hard for God. Trust him. Believe him. Bring his word back to him. Fast. Pray. Observe the Sabbath. Command his word to come to pass. See if he will not show up for you. Glory be to God. So, Janine, you don't have to, Jereen, you don't have to feel guilty. Don't live with that. Don't live with the guilt. You know, you repent. You ask for forgiveness. You move on. Glory be to Jesus. The thing about it is that we have yet to understand the expanse of grace. We have yet to understand the power of grace. And I know there are many people that are teaching on, uh, on it, but yet even they themselves have not even begun to scratch the surface of the power of grace. Glory be to God. There is no sin that grace cannot forgive. And I'm not talking about blasphemy. You can never fall so far that God's grace cannot catch you, reach you, find you, and rescue you. You can never be bad enough that God's grace cannot reform you, transform you into his image and his likeness. Glory be to God. So have you committed a sin by having the abortion? Yes, you have. Can you be forgiven? Yes, you can. Glory be to Jesus. All right. I want to touch a little bit on this one and then I'll come back to it because I think I've gone a little longer than I supposed to. I'm trying to keep these programs to just an hour. <laughs> Y'all got to forgive Providence, but I'm long-winded. <laughs> but listen. Andy, Andy from Andrew. Well, he calls himself, uh, calls himself Andy. Andy or Andrew from Georgia. He says, Prophetess, um, do I have to come to church to be a Christian? <laughs> Let me say this. Each one of us is the body of Christ. Each one is a part of the body of Christ. Each one of us is a part of the church. However, we're not the church unto ourselves. We are not the body of Christ unto ourselves. In other words, we are a part of the puzzle. We are a piece of the puzzle. <laughs> Tracy say, take your time. <laughs> Tracy don't say that, girl, because I could go but four or five hours. We are all a piece of the puzzle. You have, you have a, people don't do jigsaw puzzles no more, eh? I used to love to do jigsaw puzzles. Anybody remember them days of jigsaw puzzles? And, and what I hated though, boy, I hated them jigsaw puzzles that had five and 10,000 pieces. You remember them once? Man, it used to take you about, if you ask me, it'd probably take you about 5,000 days <laughs> to finish one of them. But, you know, it started off with the, with, the, with the big pieces first, you know, that little children can do it and then, it went on up to 5,000, 10,000, probably more. But whenever there was a piece missing from that jigsaw puzzle, I don't care how beautiful that puzzle look, you would have a problem with that. Why? It's incomplete. It doesn't look good. Because when you have put all that time into fixing a 5,000 piece jigsaw puzzle, you want to put that on the wall. You want to frame that and put that up on the wall. You don't want a piece missing. And so therefore, <laughs> therefore, Andrew, 
Because you are a part of the body of Christ. Because you are a part of the church. You are not the church to yourself. You are not the body of Christ to yourself. So therefore, you have to fit into that jigsaw puzzle. You are a missing piece. Which means then, you have to congregate. Now I'm not saying you got to do it every day. Because you know some of these churches are out of order. Some of these churches will have church seven days a week. I, I, I never understood that. I never understood why a pastor would ask their members to come to church seven days a week. That is ungodly. That is demonic. So I'm not saying that you should go seven days a week to church. I'm not even saying that you should go every week. Now, if you're like me, I feel lost if I don't go to church every week. And when I say that in our ministry, we have church, we have service, I'm sorry, three days a week. So at some point in time, Andrew, you're going to have to congregate with other saints. You're going to have to fit into that puzzle. You're going to have to, the Bible tells us, you know, Paul tells us, don't forsake the assembling of yourselves with other believers. So the reason for connecting with your brothers and sisters in Christ is because iron sharpens iron. You become stronger. Obviously, everything that you need is not on the inside of you as it pertains to your growth and godliness. Other than that, Jesus would not have established the fivefold ministry gifts which are the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and the teachers. So there's something that you need from them. Because their job, our job, is to equip the saints to mature the body. To make sure that the body grows into one whole man, matured, and ready for the coming of the Lord. So if you don't assemble with other believers, Andrew, you are actually going to destroy yourself. You're going to self-destruct. Why? Because what you need, you won't be able to receive by being alone. Now, I know you might say, well, I watch TV. Yeah, but what about when two or three are gathered in the midst? I'm there. What about if two or three agree and touch? What about that? So if you watch television, who are you going to agree with when you have a need? When you need somebody to pray for you, who are you going to agree with? Who are you going to touch and agree with? And I know COVID-19, we can't do too much touching, but nonetheless, who are you going to come in agreement with? Most certainly, you can't come in agreement with the man you watch it on television. He don't even know you. Even though both of you are part of the body of Christ, he doesn't know that you're watching. So therefore, you have to find yourself a group of people that's a part of the body of Christ that you can be strengthened. Even if you just come to church or come to the building where the church is gathered, even if you just do that once a week. But you have to, at some point in time, you have to assemble with other believers. You can't just be in your house and say, I could be a Christian and stay in my house. No, the devil's going to destroy you. You're going to be that loose cannon. You're going to be that renegade. And the devil loves those type of people. So iron sharpens iron. Each one needs one. That's what I'm going to use. I'm not going to say each one reach one. I'm going to say each one needs one. So you need your other brothers and sisters in Christ. And so therefore find yourself, Andrew, in a local assembly where you could be taught the word, where you can uh, most certainly be ministered to by the fivefold ministry gifts. Find yourself in a local assembly. Most certainly it's not the will of God for you to be home by yourself. And I'm not saying again, I'm not saying that you have to be in church every night or every week. But at some point in time, you have to find yourself with other believers. Amen? So I hope that I answered your question. All right. Let me get moving. Because <laughs> like I say, Saturday is my Sabbath. <laughs> so thank you, thank you, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Hey, Nadine. Nadine Moss. Hey, honey. How are you, man? Yes. Glory be to God. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Oh, my goodness. Thank you, everybody, for sharing. Thank you, everybody, for staying with me, those that stayed to the very end. Thank you so much. And even those that may have, to have, le have left, that's all right. Still, thank you for tuning in. Most certainly know that I am praying for you. 
Know that most certainly the Lord has you on his mind. You are in the palm of his hands. And he will provide for you. God is our source. God is our strength. God is our help. Matter of fact, the Bible said he's a very present help in the time of trouble. So trust him. Rely on him. Believe in him. Submit yourself to him. Glory be to Jesus. He'll take you places you never expected. Glory be to God. For those of you who are watching and you don't know Jesus. Yes, hi, Nadine. Hey, honey. You don't know Jesus as your personal savior, but you say, prophetess, please tell uh, Pastor Alvin I am praying for him. Minister Nadine, please let Pastor Alvin know that I'm praying for him. Glory be to God. You're watching and you say, prophetess, I don't know Jesus as my savior. I want to accept him as my Lord and Savior. I really, really need Jesus in my life. Like you said at the beginning of the program, I really need Jesus in my life. I want to accept him as my Lord and Savior. Glory be to God. Well, if that's you, please just repeat this simple prayer after me. If you mean it from the depths of your heart, trust me. Father will come into your life by his son, Jesus, and his sweet Holy Spirit will lead you from this day forward. Glory be to God. So just pray this very simple prayer after me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I come to you now. I confess I am a sinner in need of a Savior. I ask you, come into my heart. Be the Lord of my life. Be the Savior of my soul. Forgive me of my sins. From this moment forward, I will serve you with my whole heart. If you said that simple prayer and you meant it, welcome, welcome, welcome to the family of God. You're my brother. You're my sister. Trust me. I will be praying for you. Again, to everybody, thank you so very much for joining us on Ask the Prophetess. Remember, we're here every Saturday at 3 p.m. And if you have questions, please call us, text us, WhatsApp us, or email us. Let us know. We'll try and address it on the program. The number to call if you're in need of prayer or would like to sow a seed or you have questions is outside of the Bahamas, area code 242-823. 6498. That's area code 242 823 6498. If you're in the Bahamas, 823 6498. And of course, if you'd like to send us an email, just send it to Kemi Bahamas, K E M I, Kemi Bahamas at gmail.com. Listen, more than ever before, I say this all the time and I really mean it, more than ever before, if you do nothing else for me, please cover me in prayer. Most certainly know that Prophetess is praying for you. All right, Prophet Taylor, I'm going to be watching you tomorrow evening, Prophet Taylor. <laughs> I know it's going to be a powerful show. Please keep me in prayer. Most certainly know that I'm praying for you. Trust me, this is the beginning of your best days. God bless you. I love you. Have a wonderful evening. My praise team is at church now waiting to come in there at the door. <laughs> I'm praying for you. Join us tomorrow morning at 1030 a.m. It's going to be a powerful word. Get up. Move forward. Possess the land. God bless you. I love you. Have a pleasant evening, everybody.